Hallelujah. I'm excited today to preach. <laughs> the reason why I'm excited today to preach is because of the message that I have today. Tell your neighbor, build it. Tell your neighbor, build it. You have to build it. Tell them you have to build it. God is building you, but there is a place where you have to build. <laughs> I say God is building you, but there is a place where you have to build yourself. You receive salvation, but building on your faith, you have to do it. Ha! <laughs> Hallelujah. There has to be a place where we have to build. Um, let's read Genesis and then we're going to sit all the, the rest of the time. So um, we're going to have a long scripture. But Genesis chapter 6, from verse 5, it says, Then the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil, all the time. God was not looking at just their actions. He was looking at the heart of man. And he says, the Lord, verse 6, the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. Ah, for the first time, God regretted. Can Let's go, let's go, let's go. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, so the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. And it says, but Noah, say, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 8, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, in his generation, and he walked faithfully with God. And he says, verse 10, Noah had three sons. The Bible is very careful to mention that Noah, at this particular point, before he starts building the ark, that he's already had sons. And he says he had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then now the earth was corrupt in God's sight. Oh, when we are reading this, please have a picture of what we're having right now in the earth. Right now in our time, okay? So that we have it in context. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. And he says, so God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all the people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. And in verse 14, so make for yourselves, build for yourself. An ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and insulate it inside and out. Continue, verse 15, this is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits, nini nini, and then in Endelea, and this is how you are to, and he gives them instruction. Continue, make a roof, continue, verse 17, I am going to bring... I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. Verse 18. 18. 18. All right. But I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. You, your sons and your son's wives. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male, female, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, for every kind of every kind of animal and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. That is the purpose. You are to make every kind of food that is to be eaten. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded. Lord, I thank you for your word. As we sit under the counsel of your word, I pray, O King of Kings, Lord, that you will instruct us, teach us, Lord Father, that you will also elevate our minds to be able to see and know, O King of Kings, O Lord, the plan that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your blessed seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so excited. I am so excited. I am so excited. Now, first of all, 
we need to understand the context of this particular scripture that Noah is from the 11th generation from Adam and when you read the book of uh, Genesis chapter 5 you'll see and Noah somebody begat who and begat who and begat who and the 11th son is actually Noah and from the time that they were chased out of the garden of Eden we they lived in an era where men decided to do what they wanted to do in other words it was a conscious dispensation when men decided to do as they are thinking <laughs> you live as though there is no god you live in a way that only pleases you at that particular point and they were living in a conscious where um, i am careless of what is happening around me i'm just going to do what i think is right to a point where he says that the sons of men lasted after the daughters of uh, the sons of god lasted after the daughters of men and they created something that was not of god now theologians have told us that these sons of god are either two things they are either the sons of seth or they are either the fallen angels i do not know i will know when i get to heaven but what i know is that god checked the hearts of men he checked the hearts of men and realized that the heart of man was actually evil it's not the what he was doing because every action that you have that you do comes from somewhere everything that you do that we see physically comes from somewhere that has been conceived on the internal of a man and you have decided this is what i'm going to do and that's why when jesus came he said that the law of moses say that when you kill someone you have committed murder but jesus went a step farther and he says if you hate someone you see elder robert you don't know if i hate you if i stand here you can't know if i hate you until i do something that suggests that i do hate you jesus did not just come to deal with these things that we do jesus came to deal with the conscious man because he understood that the actions come from a point where it has to be conceived in the mind for you to be you do not that's why he said that Moses said when you sleep with a woman you have committed adultery but Jesus said when you think about a woman ukikula na macho and we need to understand that Jesus did not just come to deal with the do's he came to he came to deal with the inner man this inner man and that's why in the new covenant that we spoke about here he says i will no longer no man will teach his neighbor know the lord why because i will write my laws in your heart and i will put them in your minds in other words i will deal with the inner man so that the outward man comes out and he's only revealing the son of god so God looks at this generation and he says this generation is wicked. Why are they wicked? It's because of the evil that they have conceived in their hearts. That's why they are corrupt. That they, that's why they are violent. That's why they are corrupt. That's that's why they are corrupt. That's 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 There's someone who's not getting it. That's why they are corrupt. Kenya. That's 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 why Corruption is not coming because of money corruption is coming because of the evil that we've conceived in our hearts So when we tell the government deal with corruption because it is something that has been engraved on the inside of us It is a will problem not a doing problem so God comes and the, and he wants and he looks at the heart of men to a point where now they are creating things that don't have the image of God. And he says I'm going to wipe away everything and I'm going to start again. Let me introduce to you to a God who starts again. <laughs> Let me introduce you to a God who is always willing to start again. He he's not afraid 
to start he's not gone too far to a point where he cannot begin again he says you've messed up my son prodigal son by the way I, i'm going to start again with you yes you messed up yes they called you yes they saw they witnessed as a matter of fact i was there when i saw you doing it but you see when you come back to the father the father is willing to start again where he says put a robe on him put a ring on his finger because this my son was lost but now he is found we serve a god who is not afraid we are the only ones who are ashamed to start again we are the only people who are ashamed to what 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 will they say what what what, what will they say pastor Chang, what what will they say but god is a he says to jeremiah go to the potter's house and you see that the clay is mud in the potter's hands and as the potter is making the clay it becomes mud in his hands and the pot the potter does is that he destroys it and starts because as long as you are in the master's hands he's always willing he's always willing to start again and, and, and let me tell you it doesn't matter which age you are because you can be in the backside of the desert 80 years old moses and i will start again with you it, it's not about age it, it's not about age I can call a small boy 17 years old and give him a dream but I can also call a, a man who is 80 years old and give him a vision of taking my people out of out of Egypt why because it's not about age God is willing who holds the key of life it's it's him <laughs> so he, he he is not in a hurry he is willing to start again so if you're here and you've lost your way, let me tell you, God is willing to start again. In the midst of all this chaos, God finds a man who finds favor with God. Now it is important for you to understand that Noah... <laughs> Noah did not earn grace. The Bible says that Noah found grace. Because grace is not earned. Grace is free and unmerited favor. So when, when it's, the Bible says that Noah found grace, it is not that because Noah was a good man. It is not that Noah was better than everybody else. It's just that the Noah found grace because he just walked. You see, in the midst of all this corruption and evil, God is looking for men. In the midst of all this, he's looking for someone who will stand out and say, I do not need to fit in. Uh, God is looking for someone who is not willing to fit in. I'm okay with who I am. I am willing to walk with God. Even though that what you're doing is popular. Even though what we are doing is popular, but I will find grace, not earn it, because I am not good. As a matter of fact, I do not deserve it. As a matter of fact, I do not deserve it. When we stand here preaching, we do not preach because we deserved. It's not that we were better than you. Let me just qualify so that no one looks at us as to demigods. We are not demigods. Let me tell you, we need more grace. <laughs> because as long as the anointing is on you, my friend, you need more grace. It is not that we were better. It is just that the fact that God chose you so that he can display how merciful he can be and so that people can be able to see if God can rescue this person. Yeah. 
<laughs> Unajua kuna watu niliambia nimeokoka mpaka wakaniambia we eh roba acha kudanganya watu. Wewe <laughs> unadanganya watu. You know some people in high school. You know the other day I was buying <laughs> my cousin called me and told me that her my niece who is in form 1 may be one goes out. So first of all I laughed because I said welcome to high school. Hey. Welcome to high school. Then I can it too man nini. Then I I started reminiscing the day that my clothes were stolen in form 1. And I went to my dad and I told my dad mgo zangu zimeibiwa and my father said in Greek nikiomweta gomono. Yaani in other words what it means that's why they call you monos. Wewe unaibiwa alafu unakaa hivyo. I was like is my dad telling me? <laughs> so from from two I decided I'm never going to wash my clothes. This is your pastor. So I used to go to the clothes line sinyi mmeosha na mimi nimevaa so hizi nimevaa si ni exchange na hizi mmeosha navaa to a point where another guy came and told me hey buda umeva shati yangu sasa imeandikwa jina yangu hapa hivi nikamwambia ah so kuje saa tu ndazianika pale hivi the guy told me wewe roba ulitufundisha mpaka kuibangu <laughs> How are you saved? <laughs> but that's how God chooses. God chooses the most unlikely people to show him his grace so that when he shows him his grace they are unqualified and unschooled but they have been with Jesus. Unqualified and unschooled but they have been with Jesus. The worst of the worst but they have been with Jesus because God is not looking for the perfect people he's looking for the most unqualified so that he can qualify them and God calls this man and he tells this man this is my plan i want to destroy the earth but i want you to build an ark for yourself now it's, it's very clear this thing i want you to build is is for you this this thing i want you to build is not for me i want you to build for yourself and the reason why i want you to build for yourself is for posterity so that you can be able to save the animals and save yourself and the family now this is my problem with building because the first thing you need to build when you're building is faith i used to think that when you start a business you need money until i met my boss who never starts business with money he starts business with faith and because of his faith he speaks things and the world hears what he has spoken and it colludes collides to colludes together to bring whatever it is that he has spoken Now the problem with this text is because God is telling this man to build something that he has never built before. He he is my problem. He he's building something that he has never built before. He has never seen someone else build it. So he does not have a reference point. Okay. Second thing, Noah has never seen rain. Noah has never seen rain so he doesn't know what rain is and he doesn't understand what flood is So glad Pastor Mi- Pastor Martin was speaking today because I'm about to get there you are preaching my message So this man does not understand what rain is he does not understand what a boat is because God when he picks you he'll ask you to do things that you have never done before and you have no reference point And the only thing that God wants you to do is to depend on his instructions to build it according to how he has told you to build it. Why? Because in this thing that he's asking you to build, it will preserve you in the future. You see, God is the only God who is in the present, but he is also in your future. 
So what God comes to do, he comes into your present and asks you to prepare something that will take you into your future. And if you are not spiritually alert to listen to him, you will miss out and things will find you by surprise. Why? Because you never listened when God was telling you to build. And let me tell you, everything that God tells you to build, you do not have the capacity to build it. Because if you depend on your own strength to do it, you will not be able to do it. God tells this man to start a church. He goes to Tanzania. <laughs> I'm calling you into ministry. Why? Because every time God is telling you to do something, in your eyes, I can't be able to do this. And I need you to understand that what God in this season and that we are entering into, please hear me out. In this season that we are entering into, I know everything is becoming chaotic all around. But God is asking us to build something. And that something is not to preserve just you. It will preserve your family. It will preserve the next generation. Why? Because whatever God is asking you to build is not just for you, but it is for greatness. Whoever has had me in the spirit, please hear me in the spirit. And I'm telling you that God will instruct you to do something that is beyond your strength. Why? Because you do not have a reference point. In this season, it will be the season where things that have never happened in your family, you will be the first. Oh, I need to prophesy. There are things that people have never done in your family, but you will be the first. Why? Because you are walking with him and he wants to instruct you on how to do it. He wants to instruct you on how to do it, but it is not just for you. You know, I asked God, why, di why did you give me this business idea to start this factory that we are about to open? And God told me, it's because the moment you start thinking of generations, and the moment you start thinking of impact, you have my attention. Because as long as you are, God promote me. God elevate me. God bless me with a car. God bless me with a house. No problem, God wants to give you that. But the moment you start thinking, how many jobs can I create? <laughs> how many children can I educate? How many things can I be able to do to be a blessing to other people? Because God says that I will make you a blessing. And you will be a blessing to generations. So when you see that God is, gives you an idea, he gives you an idea so that you can be a blessing, not just to your generation, but to generations to come. Because what God is asking you to do is a generational thing. Start a church. And in that church, your children are serving. <laughs> I'll give you something, Vicky. But when I give you, please understand it's not for you. You want to get my attention? You want to get my resources coming your way? Start thinking impact. Start thinking generations. Then I'll move heaven and earth so that I can bring you that thing that is... <laughs> ah! Turn to somebody and tell them, build it. Some of you have business ideas here. And you're thinking it's just for you, it's not for you. Because let me tell you, I was telling another lady the other day, the reason why God is blessing this, that we are trying to do, is because there is a man and a woman somewhere who is praying for God to give him an opportunity somewhere to serve. And what God does, God partners with men. <laughs> 
pressed down, shaken together, shall men pour unto your bosom. So what God does is that as you are praying, <laughs> God is making sure that he's partnering with men to bring that which concerns you your way. Aki watu anipati leo mimi na kuambia leo mtanipata. When you prayed God heard you. When you asked for that thing God heard you. But God has to orchestrate a way to get it to you. And that way he has to lift men and he has to lower some men so that he can give you and get you into the position that he wants to get you so that you can get there. He will create situations like Goliath, he will create situations like Goliath to set up so that you can be able to fight your Goliath and get, enter into the king's palace. Haki watu wanipati leo lakini mtanipata. God knows how to set up so that he can get you to the king's palace. And he says build it and he gives him instructions on how to build it. And we need to understand that the next thing after faith is that God gives you a picture of what he wants to build. And that's what we call a vision. He gives you a picture of what he wants you to build. And understand that sometimes what God will give you is materials. He, he, he tells Noah, go and build it from this particular tree. Because God gives trees. But you take the tree and make wood. God knows how to give you the material and the plan but you are to take the material and convert it into the thing that God told you to do I, was, I used to work at a company called PGL I was the CEO alright that was two weeks ago <laughs> That was, that was two weeks ago. So this month I'm resting before I start the factory. Now, two weeks ago, I was the CEO for 10 years. So for 10 years, people have been doing things for me. When it comes to cabs, they go. When it comes to licenses, I have someone who goes for licenses. When it comes to this, I have someone who goes for that. When we are meeting, I only meet people who stakeholders. But now when I'm building, <laughs> because when you're building, you don't have people to send around. You are the one who received the instruction to go and build it. So when you are building, you are the one, Hakuna uyo hechar wakwenda kona kanjo ni wewe. You are the one to go and see those people. You are the one to meet them and pay and follow up with them. Why? Because you are the one who, was build, who is building it. The, sec the third thing that God gives you after he gives you a vision, he gives you people. Because you need to understand that there is nothing that God will give you that you can build it by yourself. God will make sure that he brings people your way so that you can be able to build it. And the scripture tells us that he describes Noah and he says Noah had sons. <laughs> you see, God will come, but he will come at a time where he knows that you have strong men. Sons in the house who can be able to serve to help you to build. You are a son in this house. Amen. There is no way you will see things happening here that are wrong and you don't do it. That's why you come early to pangai ziviti. Mina kujaga mapema kupanga viti. Hizi viti mmekalia. Nisizi tumepanga. Because 
because I am a son. And I wipe those seats that you are seated on. Because I am a son. And you may lead praise, not because I am gifted, because I am a son. I am preaching today, not because I am very gifted, because I am a son. <laughs> God will give you able men. We buy this equipment. Sometimes you don't even know where the money has come from. Why? Because we have faithful men that God has entrust, entrusted who see a need in the house. They see a need in the house and they do not wait for other men to tell them how to do it. They come and do it because they are seeing daddy build. So they are very willing to go and cut trees. Waichape rada, niwalete daddy. Tengeneza kile unatengeneza. And we stand here. Tithe. Give offering. Come and serve. Come and pray. Why? Because we, it's not that we are in need of money. It's because we want you to understand that you are a son. Aki, I need you to understand that you are a son in the house. So don't just come and sit. Come and serve in the house. Why? Because God is giving able men. And he says that he, he served with their wives. I want to acknowledge my wife before I nini. My <laughs> Hallelujah. Mom, I almost forgot. My beautiful wife. Hallelujah. But you're looking beautiful. I love you. Hallelujah. Can you clap for my wife? Hey. This woman decided Manze had to a house help. But she's managing things. Mimi ni kosawa. God will give you able men that you can be able to build with. And I want you to sit in this house and understand that you are a son. You are a son and you are a builder. And you are building in your father's house. Never allow this house to lack anything because you are there. But one, but let me talk to family. Okay, What's family? Do not allow anything in this house to miss because you are a son. And you are a builder with your father. That's why we join ministries. That's why we fellowship. We don't fellowship because we have the knowledge of God. We all the knowledge of God. We fellowship because we have a revelation of God and I have a revelation of God. So when we come together, we commune. And that's why God says, even when you are building a church, God did not send his son and he stand, started just walking around. His son had to pick 12 people so that he can build a government, so that he can fill himse himself into these people, so that when he sends them out, they go out as sons of God who can be able to demonstrate the power of the kingdom. Why do you come to this house? You come to this house so that we can... This is an embassy where you come so that we can give you instructions, so that we can build you up, so that when you go out there, you represent the kingdom. You represent your father who is in heaven. This is just an embassy where ambassadors have come. Where ambassadors, where ambassadors have come to receive instructions so that they can go out into the marketplace and display the kingdom of God. I don't know how for how long Noah built the ark. Why? Because in chapter 5 it says that Noah was, it ends with Noah being 500 years old. And when Noah enters the ark, he's 600 years old. When he has his children, in chapter 5, it says that Noah was 500 years old. 
But when he enters the ark, he is 600 years old. So theologians have not told us how many years he built the ark. 120 years actually is God who said that man will not live more than 120 years. But we are told about 500 years and we are talking about 600 years. Building an ark. Let me tell you, when you are building, there is one of the things that we call persistence. My friend, your faith will be tested. Because you are building something that people have never seen. You are building for something, a flood, that people have never experienced. <laughs> so the one thing that will be tested is your faith. Because I am coming to see what you are building. And you are building for something that we have never seen. And you are building something that we have never seen ourselves. So the first thing that I will tell you is why are you doing this? Mbonuna waste time yako. Why are you preaching in the streets? There are people who have preached before. Why are you starting a church? There are so many churches. As a matter of fact, when we started looking for a license, ule jamo harambe pale alituambia nini kuna machachi mingi ende ni mjaribu ile. Angalieni ile iko na faith kama yeye ni mwingia hapo ndani. Si ndio basi. Because the moment you start building, one of the things that will be tested is your faith. And look at scripture. It says that when God instructed Noah, the next chapter, chapter 7, is God speaking when the ark is finished. So between when God gave him instructions and when Noah entered the ark, God was silent. <laughs> Because God will give you instructions and he expects you to do as he has told you to do it. And your faith. <laughs> Where? Mimi mbaka nilitua na mtu nikambio. Mbono unaanza, hii ekonomi ni mbaya. Usianze biyashara. Hii ekonomi ni mbaya. Why? Because every time you build, what you need to understand is that if I heard from God, and if God is in this thing, then God will supply. All I need to do is to quiver. <laughs> All I need to do is to tie myself to this word of God that he spoke to me. I had it, and I am the one who had it. You did not hear it because we were not together with you when I had it. But because I had it, I'm going to do as God told me to do. Why are you getting married? People are not getting married. Marriages are breaking. Do not get married. No, no, no. Let me tell you. God told me that this is my wife. So I'm going to start. Why are you building relationships with these people? God placed me in a place where I need to build relationships because of the next generation. Am, am I talking to somebody? Because whatever it is that God will ask you to build, please remember it's not for you. I will save your family in it, but it's not just for you. It's not just for you. You need people around you to build it. But when you're building it, when you're executing the plan, because the next nini is executing the plan, what you need to understand is that your faith will be challenged every time you're building. Can you imagine, I don't know how many years he built it. Let's just say it's 50 years or 60 years that he built. Every day, people coming and look at you, building something that they have no idea and no clue that you are building, what you are building. And they keep on asking you, why? I work. It is not working. It is not working. Working. But I remember Minister Anthony saying one thing. The only variation is time. The only variation with the things of God, it's time. And when it came to time for them to enter in, 
All this time Noah was preaching to the people. The flood is coming. The flood is coming. Noah, what is the flood? Ata mimi sijui, lakini the flood is coming. The flood is coming. Noah, what are you building? An ark. What is an ark? Ata mimi sijui, lakini the flood is coming. The flood is coming. Please come in. Please come in. Now, have you noticed that God was telling Noah to build something that he himself was bringing the flood? I know we've been preached to that when the enemy comes in like a flood. And I know what to do when the enemy comes in like a flood. I realize that scripture tells me that God will raise a standard. So I need not to worry. But what happens when God is the one who is bringing the flood? <laughs> that is why God is giving you the blueprint of your marriage. <laughs> He gives you the blueprint of your marriage so that you can build your marriage according to the blueprint of God. Why? Because he understands that floods will come. But these floods, mind you, they are not supposed to drown you. They will drown the voices that told you not to build. But what the, what the floods will do, the Bible says that as the floods increased, they lifted up the ark. Because this is the difference between the flood of God and the flood of the enemy. The flood of the enemy wants to wipe you out. But the flood of God, he brings it so that he can drown everything that is chaotic around you. So that he can be able to lift you up. Jesus Christ. No, I know two ways of getting to a mountain. You can either climb a mountain... Or you can use a helicopter to get to a mountain. But the Bible says that the flood lifted up the ark to the peak of the mountains. You see, what you need to understand is that God has a way to get you there. That may not be natural. <laughs> you see, what I need, what we do is I need a connection to connect me to this one and this one so that I can get to the top. I need to do this and this so that I can get to the top. God has a way of using floods to get you to the mountain tops. And the Bible says that when they got in, God shut them in. In chapter 7, he says that God shut them in. God has a way of making sure that whatsoever he shuts and whichever door that he shuts, no man can be able to open. Can you understand, please understand this, that the flood is coming. But God has shut. There is a Titanic that was built. And a man who built it said, even God cannot be able to drown this thing. It drowned the same month that it was built. Same month that it was built. God has a way to get you there. But this is what I need you to understand is that when God shuts you in, he's bringing you in a season, Pastor Martin, of waiting. <laughs> you see, you need to understand that God is also a farmer. He says he's the one who sows seed. And one, one thing that we do with seed is that we remove the soil and then we shut in the seed. That's why God told, get me two and two by two. Two by two, it's not because I love lions. It's because I know that the lion has a seed to procreate and produce more lions. So what I need you to do is that build me this thing that can be able to incubate my seed. <laughs> and I will shut it in. Because you need to understand that when growth comes on a seed, it doesn't grow by sprouting out. When growth starts in a seed, it begins by shooting down to be able to get stability and stamina and food. So what God does is that he shuts things in so that they can be able to grow. You see, your period of waiting is your period of growth. Oh, guy. Your, your period of waiting is your period of growth and you will miss it because sometimes you will look at the period of growth and think that God has forgotten you but God has not forgotten you God wants you to grow 
And what he does is that he's adding to your faith. Patience. <laughs> and when patience has had his perfect work, then you shall be mature, lacking. <laughs> what God is doing in the waiting period, he's setting you up in a place and he shuts you inside. Why? Because you need to find your footing. It rained for 40 days. But it took 150 days for the water to subside. That is six months. Tell me inside that ark, which connection could have helped Noah? You see, in the waiting period, even your connections, Pastor Martin, even your connections can't help you. Your connections were drowned. <laughs> Your connections were drowned. So what God does in the waiting period, he wants to make you. And what he does, he puts you in a place. You know, you know for 10 years I have never taken leave. 10 years. I only take leave in December when I'm going for holiday. So now I make a home with my beautiful wife. Where? But thank God for jobs. <laughs> so that we come in the evening to Nambiano Mesindaji, Nimesindapoa. Mkika Pamoja. For those who are not married, please get married. <laughs> it is not easy to stay with people. As a matter of fact, it is not easy to be with believers. Because in this same boat, So both of you are thinking. Because in a church you will find that people are messy. And God places you in an environment where he has shut you so that you can learn to live with people. <laughs> you learn to live with people who are messy just like you. You see, in the boat, all of us, ni wanyama, wa, nini, wanyama, wanyama shamba, tuko pamoja. <laughs> all of us are the same in the boat. The only thing, factor, is that we are alive. We go to the shamba and we see maize. My vitungus were very good. They were looking very good. You saw my vitungus. I posted them in the nini. They looked very good. But let me tell you, when we were planting, I, when Njoro saw my photo, he was laughing. I had my gambuts, my nini. I was looking all muddy. Why? Because in the waiting period is the time for sowing. And God is making sure that he shut you so that he can groom you. So that he can grow you. So that he can put something in your mind. You see, add to your faith not only that, but add knowledge. In the waiting period, if you are sensitive, you need to add your knowledge. Amen. In the waiting period, you need to add your knowledge. And not just knowledge of books, but knowledge of knowing him. It is in this waiting period that you will have your communion with God because there will come a time when those doors will be opened and then the world, you will have to face the world and what you face the world is not what you have on you, it is what you have on the inside of you. People will not want to listen to what you have on you, people want to listen to what you have on the inside of you. Over six months, seeing the same, same people Wiping animals' feces. You see, in the waiting period, you will have odd things to do. You will do anything. Why? Because God wants to place you in a waiting period where he can be able to teach you and he can be able to commune with you. The reason why God made sure that the sons were older enough to be able to enter the ark 
is so that the sons can be able to see what their father is doing in terms of faith so that when they leave the ark, they will know what to do when their father is not around. You see, Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. So God makes sure that he brings people who can be able to witness what you are doing and how you're walking in faith. And at your lowest moment, when you are shut in, they will see you when you're obeying God. They will see you when you are shut in and they will see you when you are glorifying God. So I urge all the parents here. When you pray, pray with them. Build it with them. I remember Pastor Peter used to tell me that he used to go to the library until his children used to see him reading the Bible. To a point where they fell in love with reading the Bible because they saw their father. Whatever it is that you're building, Build it because the next generation depends on what you are doing. One man said this, that what becomes, get this, oh my God, this blessed me. He said what becomes an option for one generation, it becomes an unnecessary thing for the next generation. What becomes an option to you coming to church, what becomes an option to you praying, when it becomes an option to you reading scripture, the next generation, it will become unnecessary to them. It will become unnecessary to them because you made it an option. Oh, today I'm not going to church. Nikona job, nikona customers. Who brought those customers? Oh, uh, let me talk to the people. In the, who, who brought those customers? All like online. Hallelujah. <laughs> Today I'm talking to family so that you understand. You are sons. Whatever it is that you make an option in this generation, your generation, the next generation, it becomes an option. It becomes an option. And we have been there where we saw our parents never going to church. And some of our siblings have ended up not going to church. It is right. We've been places where we do not pray. So our children don't even know how to pray. I went to a school in Naisuli. It's, it's there in Kitengela. My friend, I was asked to come and uh, because it was a day when we were praying for the candidates. It's a very expensive school. Nizile school, Zunali Pasiju, it's 300, 400,000. So they asked me to come and preach. We came with a donage, we sang, and then I preached. So that day I sat, when I, when I finished preaching, I called all the parents and I asked them to stand with their, with their candidates. And I asked them, please, I want you parents today to pray for your children. Let me tell you, there was laughter. Me, I was like, I was sure, you know, Iceland. <laughs> you know parents who pray. But now I've gone to a place where Sijui, PS, Wanani, PS, what, Nini are there. So I asked them to pray and the kids started laughing. One child who was standing next to me, a, a, a lady, looked at, his, at, at her father and asked daddy, daddy, do you even know how to pray? And the father was like, mm, what are you? <laughs> because I was standing here, the father was like, mm. By the time they finished praying, everyone was crying. Because for the first time, there are people who had, and we're talking about people who are in high school, they had their father pray, who has never prayed for them. What you make an option it will become unnecessary. I finish with this. The last thing that you need to do for you to build is you need to give a thanksgiving. You need to have a thankful heart. It said that when no one left the ark, the first thing that he did is that he offered thanksgiving to God. 
A man who had been there for 150 days had never eaten an animal. He had never eaten meat. And the first meat that he offers, he offers it to God. He has been shut in. He has seen the promise of God sustaining him through the thing that he built. But the first thing that Noah, when he comes out of the boat, he does is that he offers thanksgiving. We were coming with Pastor the other day, and I finished with this. The other day we were coming with Pasi. And one of the things in his heart, he was saying that people have grown to a place where they do not know how to honor God. Let me talk to the house today. We've gotten to a point where we do not know how to honor God. We do not know how to honor God. Hey, Peter Ukumanze, Unakuja in the morning. People are running with their dogs. You know, I got, to, uh, ask Pastor Martin, we got to high school is when we discovered that people don't go to church. Because in our home and in our area, everybody, who's everybody, went to church. So when I got to high school and discovered that people don't go to church, I was like, oh. So let me ask, what do you do on Sunday? Because I don't understand how, how do you just, in that time there was no online church. Eh? So how, 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 what do you do on Sunday? No, Munini. The last time I went to church, oh, my uncle had died. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The last time you went for a memorial? Why? Because we do not know how to honor God. You do not know how to honor God. We have taken God so casually, and this same God has come, rained, flood. But God has, amidst all this chaos that was happening, he made sure that you are peaceful. You see, that's what you need to understand that salvation is. It's not that God took you out of it. It's that God, even though you are in the midst of this world, God has given you inner peace. Yes, I know everything is going up. The prices are going up. There is mandamano. But God has made sure that on the inside of you, he has given you peace. He has given you peace. And all he's asking, can you come into my house just one day and just give me thanks offering? Three things on how to honor God. He says, first of all, offer the fruit of your lips, which is praise. He says, any man who offers thanksgiving to me honors me. Psalms chapter 50. Anyone who offers thanksgiving to me, he honors me. Second thing he says, honor me with your body because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you want to honor me, honor me with your body. And Paul tells us, give your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable, Romans chapter 12. For this is what is pleasing. Give me that, who you are. Give me who you are. You honor me. You honor me when you give me you. <laughs> hey. Lili Joy see the message, amen. Mingi. So I said my amens before I came here. If you don't give me with your lips. You may not have a cow or a bull to offer. But come in the house of God and just lift up your hands. Wherever you are at home, take some time, the 24 hours that I've given you. Just take a moment and just give me thanks. Because I have kept you alive. I have shut you in. I have made sure that what is outside does not come in. I have made sure that what was coming, the arrows by day and by night, I have made sure that I have shielded you so that I can protect you. Take some time out of the time that I've given you and give me thanks and honor. I have brought you here. You are here because of me. Men, we have forgotten how to honor God. 
And he says, honor me with your lips. Honor me with yourself. And he says, honor me with your substance. There are people who have sat under this grace, who have received blessings. Let me tell you, me and Pasi, we are not broke. Uh, Pasi, are you broke? We are not broke. But in this house, God has created an altar where you can come and lay your sacrifice and say, God, I am thanking you because you have done this for me. God, you have protected me. God, you have promoted me. God, you have lifted me. You get a job, you, go, you move from church. What are you talking about? And you are here crying to God, asking God to give you a job. You get a job and you leave church. Noah comes out of the boat and the first thing that he offers is thanksgiving. You get married and then you leave church. What do you mean? You are building something the wrong way. Come and offer thanksgiving. God brought that man to you. God brought that woman. He raised them up. My wife grew up in Mombasa. I grew up in Nairobi. All this time I was praying for a wife. God knew where my wife was. As a matter of fact, my wife tells me that when he was, she was in, uh, in, 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 in college, the lecturer was telling her, actually not college, high school, the lecturer was telling her that you, you're in form four, leave these boys to boys alone. That is lecturer is from God. Leave. <laughs> that lecturer was telling my wife, leave this to boys. Do you know your husband is working somewhere? It's a man of God. You need to understand that when God, when God designed you, he already knew who was perfect for you. Let not that perfect thing that God created you take you away from his presence. Come and honor God. With your family, come and honor God. Honor God. He has kept you alive. He has been good to you. He has raised you up. He has made sure that he has sustained you. He shut you when everything around you was going haywire, but he kept you alive. You better come to the house of God and give him honor. Honor me with the fruit of your lips. Honor me with your body. And honor me with the substance, your first fruits. God, you have helped me to build this house. Sasa ukuji church, unalala kwa hiyo nyumba. Bless me with a car. Now you're traveling everywhere. Except traveling to church. Today I'm talking to family. And I know when we're talking to family, people don't shout a lot. I understand. But I need you to understand that whatsoever it is that God has asked you to build, remember it is not for you. Please remember it is not for you. Mama Divine came, I mean, can you deal with my son? And I asked Divine, what, what is it that, what did you do? I was not feeling it. I was bored. I didn't want to sing. So I asked him, do you know when you do not sing, your sister will not sing? Because he was standing next to my son and my son loves to follow him. I asked him, do you know when you disobey teacher, my son who looks up to you will also disobey the teacher? Because you need to understand that whatsoever God is doing in your life, <laughs> He says, without a vision, people perish. It means that if you one vision carries so many people, so if you do not answer to the call, if you do not answer to the call, guess what? People will perish because you never said yes to God. And that goes for your children as well. It 
in this season, hear what God is asking you to build. Build it according to how God has asked you to build it. And when you are done with it, make sure that you come in the house of God and give him honor. You give him honor. Give God honor. Give him honor. Come here. Four, five years we've asked people, come early to pray. Come early to talk to your father. We're not keeping a register of who comes early or not. It's you to come early. If you can wake up for a meeting at 7 a.m. Because it has money in it. Then wake up to come and hear from God who has your life in him. Come here and honor God. Am I clear? Kama mimi na panguza viti, atawe uneza panguza. Kama mimi, you know there's another day we found here a watchman who was very cru, very, eh, he was very rude. Maka natuambia, wewe, nasayo ni mimi ya naniongelesha, wewe, fanya hivi, rude yuko ndani, ni mimi ya naniambia, mimi yo pasta eh, wewe, rude yuko ndani, nda kuita saizile viti zimekuja. I went back. We were with Vicky. Vicky ni wongo. 20 minutes later we came back. Ah, zile viti ju service kwa karibu kwanza tunaweza zipata. Ah, nimewaambia mrudi only for us to hear that the seats were actually in eighth floor. Eh, pastor wenyu twende tuchukue viti washirika wana I don't do it so that I can showcase. I do it because I'm a son in the house. It's not because I need his applause. As a matter of fact, he didn't even know. But you do it because you're a son and you honor God. Kindly rise to your feet.